Moving along with the uh, Honda. I've had a lot of interruptions, things I had to do. So I finally get it back today. I changed the oil, oil filter. Now I'm ready to start on the front brakes and I thought I'd show how I do it. Now here's why when I bought the bike used, I said go all over it. It's up off of the, the front wheels up off the ground. I have the center stand up and I put a jack under and jacked it up to get the wheel off the ground. Now you have these disc brakes and they drag a little bit, but this wheel should turn pretty free. So you can see you really got to turn it. So there's something wrong. And what it probably, right here is a hard spot. That is hard. Plus, I want to take the wheel off to balance it the way I balance it. But what it probably is, is these have never been cleaned, maybe never replaced. You have to take these calipers apart and clean them. Then you put it together, everything works nice and free. So the first thing I'm going to do is, if you take this off, then you go to take your line off. The uh, brake fluid comes down through here, and I'm going to be checking or emptying the brake fluid, putting new in. But this bolt right here is always very, very tight, hard to get off. And when you have this out in your hand, it's hard. So the first thing to do is loosen that first. <coughs> That thing is tight. Now I'm going to snug it back in so the fluid don't keep running down. Now I know when I take this off, I can go ahead and uh, get this loose. I've taken these two bolts out. This bracket that holds the brakes go behind it. And I had to actually take a rubber hammer and hit on this to get it off of the brake. It was so tight against it. The brake shoes look really good, but they're going to be replaced. I don't know how long he's been in there, and as cheap as they are, I'm throwing them away, get, putting new ones. Now, working with this, getting ready to take this off, you really have to be careful with the brake fluid. Anything it gets on, it'll ruin. So what I'm going to do is turn the steering over this way so the hose will be hanging out over, and I have my oil pan I'm going to put under here to catch a brake fluid and I don't want anything to splash as that drips down so what I'm going to do is take a couple paper towel and put in there this will keep anything from splashing because that brake fluid eats into everything you want to be so careful with it uh, let's see what I did Another thing I like is this right here. If you can see this plug here, that's for the oil in your front uh, forks, your front forks. And you can change that oil. You have to be able to get the top off. Then you take this out, drain it, and then in the book it'll say how much oil's in here, and it'll say wet or dry. They mean by wet is if you're just draining it out and putting new fluid in. Now, if you tore these, say, clear down to rebuild them, it would be all dry inside, so it would be more oil it would take. But I really like the looks of that. So let me find a wrench, that wrench I had for this. So now that this is going to be hanging over, and I can catch it in my pan, I can take a 12 millimeter wrench and break this loose here. That's where the line goes on. When you go to put it back, then you'll remember that that goes right in between here, so it holds this line. Brake fluid is some nasty stuff. Then on here, I want to see if there's a washer. It looks like there is. There's a washer up here and a washer down here. It's usually like a copper washer, that uh, so it seals. I took the oil plug out of this to change oil in the bike, and there was no washer on it at all. But I have a set of copper washers that I bought at Harbor Freight. Now, that fluid I can just let go. It'll drop, uh, drain down in there. It'll come out of the line. 
but like I said I want to make sure I put some paper towels in there so it don't splash I don't want that splashing up on the bike now I can get the oil out of this and then start working on it but it looks really cruddy in here it's just uh, these the caliper here those pistons in there are probably so gunky and everything that's why it's holding back and with one wheel off I turned it and I thought well maybe this one's hung up that one isn't over there but still it's it's too much it gets a loose spot like right there it's a little easier now it goes back here it could be the the brake over there a uh, little warped but it's still it's too tight so it's gonna have to be taken off but I'll show this one side now if this had been on my car I wouldn't have uh, taken this off the caliper if I was gonna do it I would have let the caliper on that took it off the car with this on and I would have had Lois pump the brake I'd have put the pan up under there with paper towel and I'd, that would push the pistons out because the ones in the car are hard to get out once they're off and there's no fluid or anything so but this one I'm gonna work different now I'm gonna work this side this caliper then I'll lay it down here then I'll do the other side before I put this back on there's no sense of putting it on and getting it all lined up and everything because I'm going to be taking the wheel off to balance it and clean it and go over it so now this will have to hang here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a paper towel a couple of these paper towels and I'm going to put in a lunch bag to soak up any brake fluid that comes out and I'll put it up over there and I can zip it up and I think I'll get like a uh, maybe a twisty tire or something and put around here to make sure it doesn't come off now if any comes out it'll go down and get soaked up and I can leave it I can take the uh, wheel the other way it won't hurt because I don't want to get any of this fluid dripping down on anything now I can move on to the caliper itself with the caliper I sprayed it all out with uh, brake clean and I sprayed it down this hole now if you weren't going to take this off you never want to spray that in there but I'm taking it apart so I, I'll be cleaning it out so I'm gonna, this is the way it goes on right there. So I want to take this bracket and I'm going to put it in my vise in the soft jaws. Clamp it up. Now I can work on it. You can see right here is a pin going through the two brake pads and there's one right down here. Now this pin I believe just slides out. This one is the one you have to unscrew. But to check it to see if it's floating, see I have the bracket in the vise. I can slide it back and forth. It seems like this rubber isn't really staying where it should. But it slides real easy. That's to keep this centered with your disc brake or your disc. First thing I'm going to do is take out this screw up here. the back ones were really tight you need really a screwdriver that will handle this you know not one that's too big or too little because you could kind of round that and then you'd have a hard time getting it out now that that's out that's a plug in here is an Allen key to take this out it's like that so when you put the pin through and get it where you want it tight then you put that plug in to lock that really locks it together I've got a number five metric Allen, so now I can get this out. Ooh, that's tight. Now it should be.
Now as I screw that out, that'll leave this end and go. This is the side that really capture your brake pads. All of that. Now that's had some of that copper stuff on it. That's not the color of the uh, the rod because I wiped the other one in the back off. So they did put like it's almost like an anisees or something. I use grease. So I'm going to take us out of the vise. Whoop. Keep bumping the camera. That was one of my soft pads. There goes the other one. Okay. So let me see how I did that on the other one. That rubber goes clear through there into here. I have to look at it for a little bit because it's been a while since it took the other one out and I believe this pin yeah it's a floater that one then you have this anti-rattle piece in here You've got your brake pads in here I think I believe this piece just slid out get the rubber off of it and this is hanging me up right here I think I may have to take this and loosen this to get this out but I thought that pin come out of there I'll take it off camera figure out how I took the other one apart after looking it over, I turned it over. The one brake fit pad fell right out. Then I remembered the pin down here that I unscrewed and took out. That's out there. The other part doesn't have one. It just sets up in there and it's trapped with everything else. So it, it came right out. I just couldn't remember how that was. There's the other one. There's a lot of wear left on these, but like I said, I got brand new ones. I'm going to go with them. They weren't that much. Now, the bracket, I think, yeah, comes right off that holds it on. I can lay that there. Now, you can see the two pistons, and they're up pretty high. So what I can do is I can take a hold of the my uh, vice grips or something and just wiggle these back and try to get them out but first I'll, I'll spray a little blaster around them and see if I can wiggle them loose I, I don't want to put any more marks on than I have to but that rubber boy it's uh, there's two I think two rubbers down inside that keep it from leaking that allows the pressure and they've been in there quite a while so let me get that set up and show that I've removed the bleeder out of it and this little thing it's just a rubber for the cap and that piece on there broke off from it but it's just to hold this this piece doesn't seal on here it's down in here where it shuts it off and on so that don't have to be together but that's the rubber cap for this. If you ever lose one of these, I know Ace Hardware's has these little rubber caps, different colors you can put, and there's one, I can't remember the color, that goes fits on these uh, nipples. They want you to keep it on there, so you keep the dirt out of that hole where it bleeds. Now, now I did have brakes that worked coming home coming on and off so I suspect that these are a little bit loose but just to look at it man that thing is like gunky so I'm going to tr try to figure out how I can put it in a vise sorry about the camera again <laughs> and get it in there where it's not going to hurt nothing to clamp down on it 
and I can get in there and work. Right there. And I'm looking for the blaster. I think it helps to put a little bit around there. It's all going to be clean good, so it don't hurt what it gets on. Just get some in around it. Now, I'm going to try my channel locks first. I don't want to use vice grips on these unless I really have to. But a lot of times, this here will save you from buying another caliper. Yeah, that one's wiggling. The back one didn't. It didn't wiggle at all. It's coming. As I turn it, I'm pulling upward. There it is. There's one of my pistons. Doesn't look bad. The back one's really bad. Now inside there, I have to be careful. There's two O-rings. Oh, that one's, oh, it's tight. Wow. I like to just swing it back and forth, back and forth, get it loosened up. It's a lot tighter than the other one. It was holding up. But these should be so free. That's where it gets where you're going through brakes a lot. So I'm going to try this. <clears throat> try a different size. Here it comes. Now I know it's loose, so I start pulling up. I'm pulling up, it's coming. Now I grab it down here. I'm just squeezing real easy. I don't want to put marks any further down than I have to. Because when this is in there working with new brakes, there's probably about that much sticking up up here that I can grab and work with. Now I got that. Now let me get something else. So first I'm going to try to wipe out any dirt that's in there. I want to get them as clean as I can. Now, I got an area on my bench where I can lay them out just as I took them out. I'll put them back in the same way. I don't know where I got these picks. Probably Harbor Freight. But you have to be careful. You don't want to rip that rubber in there. If you do, you're going to have to buy this. But you can go real slow and easy and try to work it right on the edge and just pull gentle and there that's the outer one it's really thin there's no marks on it or nothing I'll be cleaning it off checking it now the next one down in there I'm going right between the metal and the o-ring or that yeah it's an o-ring light and I'm gonna Try to get it lifted out. I don't want to dig into it. Got it. And as you can see, it's a thicker one. Okay. This is the outer one. That's the inner one. So when I lay them on a bench, I'm going to lay that like that. That way I know this one was close to me, this one wasn't. If I lay them like that, right there, I'll know where they go. Now let's try the other side. Right down at the bottom of the ring, the top ring, I'm working this in between the metal and the gasket, and it just pushes the gasket right out. There's the outer one. The same way with this one. I do not want to cut into that O-ring. It's not really an O-ring. It's a rubber seal because it's not 
the shape of an O. It's flattened. And I don't know, I don't think you could buy them. I know for cars they usually come with it. And they won't sell them separate. There's the other one. Got it. I put those uh, seals left on the left, right on the right. So now I know when I put this in here, I'll put it in the same way in the vise. I'll know left from right because I'll have it up to work on it like this. Now, a couple other things I want to clean, or one here. Is this rubber in here, and you have to be careful. The pin goes in, so this seals it. This out here protects the end from moisture or anything. This is one piece clear through here. It would be hard to squeeze this piece and have it go through there. Be easier to squeeze this piece and let it come this way. So I'm going to try to get it kind of forced in that hole a little bit, and then I'm going to pull on it, come right out real nice, so it goes in that way. And I'll lay it there. Now I have the whole works of it, and I don't know if the camera could see down in there. You can see there is something in there. This one too, a little bit, but especially this one. I don't know if the camera can pick it up. But there's actually, okay, it was probably part of that seal. It was down inside. You know, I didn't, I didn't do that, but that was laying down in there. It might have been when it was put in. It looks like a thin, thin piece of it. Maybe it got pinched somehow, or I don't know. But everything else looks good. I use carb cleaner on it again. Then I'll take cleaner, scrub it. I can even take this over in the sink, wash it all out real good. Because now there's no rubber, there's no seals or anything on it that, you know, I would hurt. But I can clean all this. It has to be like, you know, really like look like brand new. So I'll do that and come back. Now that part's clean. I really got it all clean. I got the bracket clean, ready to go on. And I just have a few more things to clean there. And I cleaned these out in here with real, real fine wet and dry sandpaper. I mean really fine in here. There was some little marks. Got those out. And then uh, I put these in the lathe and buffed them up. You could do it by hand, but I just did it in a lathe. It's a lot easier. Now, when these go in, now that's without the two rubber seals in there. You put it in, that's the way it should be, like that. Right in. There was a lot of crud in there, and especially in around the grooves inside where the two rubber seals go. Two rubber seals in there, those are crusty in there. So I took my pick and real easy, I don't want to scrape the metal, and I went inside and cleaned all that crust out. Got them really clean. So now I can clean just a few more parts there I have, start putting that back together. You can see how clean it is. All that dirt and uh, inside, you can see that, they're really clean and I blew it out real good and I had to get gasoline to clean this and I use wire brush. I don't like to use uh, the steel brushes on it. I use the uh, brass brush. So there it is. In a little bit, I'll be ready to start putting those in, put the rubber seals in, clean some other parts, put it together and then I'll just set it off the side and go to the uh, left side of the bike for the left front brakes. I noticed this one side, that uh, lower seal, in, or the upper seal in there, the thin one, they had snagged a little bit and got a little bit of this down in there from that seal. Now I believe the bottom seal 
the heavy one is in there and that's what keeps the pressure from coming out and everything and I think the upper one is so water from this side can't get in there so if, if I put this back together I think I'll be all right the ring don't look bad I think it's you know it's gonna be okay but the top ring I found is you when you put it in you have to really work careful I took it in and out like three times starting it make sure it's flat go around and make sure it doesn't have like a little bit of twist or anything it has to lay in there flat and it takes a while to get in once you have it in then you can put your thumb in there like this and push it real hard the whole way around and I can see it's fit, fitting back in that groove but that one you have to really watch then this is my thing my little uh, piston and I'm going to see if I can get it. I'd like to get it without putting anything on it, but I have a rag here, uh, right here, that has some armor on it. And I'm just going to wipe this bottom piece a little bit to just get a little bit of lubricant to get the, it down over that first, that first seal. The second one, it's uh, thick enough that it should take care of itself. And as I put it in, I'm turning. And it's going, I think it's going, yeah, there. Now that went pretty good. Now it's hitting the second seal. And I think if I take this handle, or let me see, a screwdriver handle. One here. Oh, too big. Let me find a handle here someplace. Gotta be one around. Can't seem to find one. Size I want. Well, let's try this. That's my channel locks. I'll try putting that down in there. And I just want to push easy. Oh, there it goes. It's going down in, I can see. And I'm gonna put it about right there. So when I put my brakes in, it'll be back some. It went straight down in there real easy. I, I had to push a little bit, but not real hard. So that's to get that back in there. Now I can do the other one. And all these rubber parts like this I had off and out, I wiped them all with armor all. This one, I don't, it, there's gonna be grease in it, so I don't wipe it inside. I cleaned it inside. I put new grease, but the outside, I, uh, spray a lot of armor on all and I wet it down real good rub it in and I think it keeps that rubber real pliable and nice the second set of uh, gaskets are in there them rubber gaskets and that bottom one was really hard to get in I had it almost the whole way around but I could feel one little place and it would stick up what it was was that ring in there is not setting flat to the groove. It's like a little twisted like this. It, it doesn't want to go in and set flat. So what I did found was if I take my finger and I start rolling it back and forth like this, pulling on it real hard and just working it, working it, all of a sudden it started getting flatter and flatter. It started squaring up with the groove that it goes in. So I just kept doing that and you can tell when they're flat, you put your thumb or finger the whole way around and put your thumb in there and really push it good, you can feel it is flat the whole way. That's the way because you definitely don't want to put this in there until those are in those grooves right because if you do and you force this down in there, it's going to cut that rubber. So now I got a little bit of armor all, just a little bit I'm going to wipe on this edge right around here to get it started and the solid part goes down so I'm going to put it in there and I'm going to start it real easy and I'm kind of turning it back and forth as I go wig on it it's going I can feel it's going nice you can really feel it when it's it's set right you don't have to force it real hard I mean you got to push it over the rubber but it is going so now I think I got it down far enough I can go with this handle again. Now I think right there I'm on the second 
rubber, look, it's going right in. See, I'm just slowly pushing it. I know that's right. Perfect. Because it just slid down in. I didn't have to have, you know, pound on it or force it. You just got to make sure those rubber gaskets are flat in there in the groove the way they should be they're square the grooves like squared out it's circular but it's not an o-ring those aren't o-rings those are gaskets and they're both in this is a bracket that came off of it you can see how this part goes where there's a clip in here for the brakes to set in i didn't have to take it off because i i just wire brushed it with a uh, brass brush and it came really clean if it had been real bad I had to take it off clean it put it back on but that's okay there now the next thing is to get this in and I went over this with uh, armor all and you'll see right in here there's a groove and this piece that's where the pin goes through not yeah and uh, this goes in there and what you have to do is just work it real easy push it in real good and let it go into that groove and get, get it seated and I, I always like to turn it to make sure it's like you know evened out and there it is that's now that's ready to go back on to the main caliper this one but first I have some marine grease I'm going to use uh, first let me get this one this is for the other side of the brakes and it goes just like that it snaps right on now the tops of the brakes will push against this the other one will be down there against the uh, brakes for the anti-rattle so when i go to put the pin through i got to push this down just a little bit or push on the brakes and it's like spring load it holds them to keep it from rattling let me close this in just to set it here there now to start take a little bit of my grease on here get it loaded up now that rubber that I just put on the bracket will go on this side and I cleaned this this I think I said already that that can be turned out it's like an allen key in the end and uh, I was going to and it was real tight so I said I'll just leave it go I can clean it there you know just get all the crud off of it and oxidization and that and I cleaned it good okay there's that now on the bracket itself I'm going to put some grease on this part this is the other part to it then right here where it's going to rub on the uh, brakes I put a little bit of grease on there just to help it slide back and forth and down where the brake set in here I'm putting a little bit of grease doesn't take much just a little little film of it Oop, almost knocked it off there I'm putting that there uh, I had some regular brake brake grease you can get it in them little packs Get the auto parts you always have them up in the front probably be best to get that and a lot of times when you buy grease or I mean brakes you'll get grease with it they'll give you a little package to put in there I'm gonna put some in this cup that rubber cup that'll help feed the grease to it whenever it works okay got that let me wipe my hand off and this is just time consuming doing everything but hey take it to a deal or something you know what you're gonna pay so here's one pivot point here's the other now this is taller so I can start it first it'll go right in that rubber cup and I'll swing it around to line it up with this rubber cup and as I go down I'll just wiggle this this end over on my right back and forth I don't know if you can see it from my hand I just wiggle that back and forth so it'll start going and then it'll just go right down on and I could hear it snap into the rubber so 
it's seated take a little of that extra grease off so it don't get onto my brakes and getting this all done and then I'll do the other one okay I got everything ready for the new brakes and the brakes you can see they were down if you look you can see the bottom and how thin compared to the top the top one's a new one so while I'm there it's best to put them in now the way this works is the part with the hole goes over here and this has that that goes right down in there where I greased that has a like a track that it rides back and forth on and I just put that in there there that's in then the other one goes in the same way it'll go down there and that bottom part will fit in that track if it isn't you'll know it won't go in sometimes you gotta kind of twist it right there it is it goes over here now I got these in place they just have to be spread apart and I'm gonna do it I want to get a clean screwdriver and a paper towel okay now what I do is I get a screwdriver to separate these brakes and get them in place this one I'm having a little trouble with it come out of the track on the bottom so I just pick it up and work it back in the track down at the bottom there there it should go in they're a little tough there now I got them both in the tracks where they should be now if I set this down they're gonna come out of the tracks they're gonna you know be back where I started from so I spread them and I get them like that then I take a piece of paper towel and I shove down in there between them if I was gonna go put this on the bike I'd put the pin in and do all that and then go and put it in the bike but I like to shove a piece of paper towel in there now see that'll keep my brakes from falling they won't come out so now I got to clean my pin I haven't cleaned it yet it'll go through from this side where it, the threads are here it'll go in there then that lock plug this plug and that's a lock plug to lock that so to make sure the brakes don't come out or anything like that now on this pin that goes through I had showed how he had used copper like a copper coating I know it had copper in it I don't like that I don't use it you can see here I've wiped that real hard I've cleaned it with uh, brake clean wiped it again real hard and that is actually the metal it's the metal that's getting a little bit like rusty so this is gonna have to be buffed up and then the plug it shouldn't hurt it it looks like uh, this might just all be be a little rust you know from I don't know but that other one I did in the back it looked like he had put copper stuff on it because I rubbed it and it was like copper this one wasn't it's more like maybe that's corroded there that's like a fine rust on it which is no good that has these have to slide on this so that's got to be buffed up so I put this in the lathe and there's only going to be so much where it's going to be outside that's why it's correct this was corroded because it's out in the weather this tip goes in here so what I did was I grabbed it in the lathe by that and then I took real real light uh, wet and dry sandpaper and went over it and got all that smooth now when I go to put it in I have that marine grease I'm going to put just a little bit on here and that'll help with the oxidization and it'll help it's better than nothing even on this tip 
out here where it goes in there it, it can have some on maybe a little more and I want to make sure there's some down in here I had already put some on but make sure for the Anna rattle play a uh, little clip so now I can slide this in and like I said it won't go in so you got to push down on the there it goes usually got to push down on the brake to get it in yeah I see it's got to go down further it's just kind of like a puzzle to get it all in but it'll go take my paper towel back out okay now make sure it's yeah it's out of the bottom it's always what happens there it went in now it's closer I should there I just pushed down on it you can see I'll take it back out show see that's that anti rattle clip so you put that in there on to the other side make sure it's down in and it's out <laughs> they always come out of that bottom thing but you just wiggle it it'll go in now this one I'll push down a little bit and it's right on the threads it goes in now if I got it right what I do with my screw that was a screwdriver I think I put the grease on clean it off oh that's an Allen uh, key goes in there there you want to make sure the thread goes are straight yeah it's going in it's going in easy that's nice put a clear into the bottom there tighten it up <coughs> it's good and tight now wait till I clean this off I forgot to clean it I'll wire brush it so I cleaned the screw real good threads and everything and now that's where the pin went in and I tightened it up real tight now right there I can put this little plug in there and as I said that's a lock plug so that that pin will never come out once you put this in there and tighten it up okay it's tight now one last little thing I'm going to take a little bit of this marine grease and just rub on there and what it'll do is it'll keep that from rusting won't hurt nothing and there you have it that is one of the brakes done the bracket the caliper everything looks brand new and I have the uh, what do you call it I have the brakes spread apart so you know where the uh, piece is clear in now for this my I'll just start my bleeder in there and leave it let me get it top off of it there nice all bleeder down here wrong hole <laughs> wonder why it was so easy to go in this you have to make sure you got it wiggle it that's it you just wiggle on it and playing with it make sure it goes in straight then I'll put the cap on when I go to bleed it it'll be right there this is where the line goes on and the pipe on the line goes right through here so it holds it and a copper washer on top and bottom if you don't have them like I said you can get a set at Barber Freight a uh, assortment of them and you can do it yourself you know if you take your time and if you're going to do work on your bike you should have a book so i hope this showed you about the brakes i mean it's just time consuming and it's not difficult watch how you take it apart film it if you have to take pictures of it have a good day